hello and welcome to COVID Cast uh, at Reykjavik Grapevine. Uh, today we're going to go over the daily uh, stuff when it comes to the COVID in Iceland. And there has, of course, a lot happened, like you have noticed, not only here, but in your own home country. Uh, my name is Valur Grattison. I'm, I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Grapevine. I'm Andy Fontaine. I'm the news editor at Reykjavik Grapevine. We're just going to go over uh, simple things like uh, like uh, how where we stand right now, is there a flight ban, uh, and, and we're going to answer some questions and I'll talk a little bit about decodinetics, which is testing everyone. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yes. Uh, just perhaps just let's start on how many are affected. The newest numbers, and keep in mind this changed very rapidly, uh, are 180 Icelanders have the COVID-19. 80% mm-hmm. of them uh, are because of uh, the ski ski tri- skiers yes. that went to Italy and Austria. Uh, and uh, the rest is uh, people that got infected by them, uh, more or less. It's, it's all connected to these two ski trips. Yes, exactly. Very, very dramatic ski trip there. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, 1,733 people are in quarantine right now. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how much is proportionally for... A, for like US, I think it's like over a million. Uh, Could be. Yeah, it's like it's incredibly high number. It's like it's it's close to one percent of the nation, uh, which is three three thousand five hundred people. Uh, and uh, what is interesting is that the new cases that we have uh, got, uh, according to the civil guard, uh, they have all of all of these new cases were uh, the people that were tested. They were already quarantined. So they are yes. very, they are very good in catching them, quarantining, and and slowing the spread that, in that way. Mm. But uh, to the like biggest news, the gathering ban, uh, it started uh, today. It started at midnight, mm. and like, what does this entails? Uh, no gatherings of more than one hundred people. So that of course affects a lot of conferences and musical events, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. Um, it's even affected public transit. Yeah. Uh, yes, of course. I mean, you have to go like inside the buses in in the back. Mm-hmm. Do not linger around the the bus driver. No. <laughs> and stuff like this. Uh, the the gyms, all of them are closed. The mm-hmm. swimming pools are all closed. Uh, it's basically a practical thing because the rules are simple. It's like we are now breaking the rules a little bit. There is also uh, if if there is gonna be like. Uh, uh, if you're going to have uh, groups like in schools because the schools are open there can never be more than 20 in the same room uh, yeah. and you have to ensure that there are two meters between uh, the, the people yeah uh, me and auntie of course if she's going to get sick i'm going to get sick and and that's like yeah we, we basically have <laughs> we're going to write yeah. this out together <laughs> we have a very fatalistic attitude about this that like if any of us was infected at any point then we're all already infected so we would all have to quarantine then yeah uh, this basically means also that the schools also will be disrupted mm. uh, in a in a hectic way. My, for example, my kid is uh, in the in the other room yeah. watching YouTube <laughs> and yeah. stuff like this. But this applies to um, yeah. Some schools have been disrupted, like the teachers are having a meeting today. Yeah. as I understand it. Yeah, but otherwise, um, play schools and primary schools are not affected by the public gatherings, yeah. any, except for the fact that they want to keep children at groups of 20 no greater than 20 yeah. but secondary schools and universities are unfortunately closed for at least the next four weeks and uh, they explained this this weekend they were asked about it specifically why are uh, kindergarten and elementary schools not closed and the answer was more or less like we explained on, on friday it's like uh, children do not get the get infected definitely but uh, they they less of them get affected by the by this disease uh, and they do not spread it around as much as as, as adults. Mm. Uh, also, it would like uh, have devastating effects on the society. Like means that yes. we would not have the nurses that we need <laughs> and stuff like this. So it, it's a uh, uh, they're punct- like they they they, they set themselves. They, they are putting uh, like teachers like in the front line in this, mm. which is a, also a, a controversial decision. But uh, what I've seen, uh, they are pretty fine with it. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, group work, obviously. Yes, we're all in this together. 
Another thing that changed this weekend uh, was that we added countries to the high risk uh, list in Iceland. And this matters because uh, these countries right now are Germany, Spain, France, Italy, China, uh, uh, South Korea and Iran. Uh, this means that everybody that comes from these countries will have to quarantine for 14 days if they come here. Mm -hmm. And also this goes the same with Icelanders. So, uh, but uh, the airport is still open. Uh, is. The Danes, they closed the airport uh, here now. Denmark closed, them, closed their airport. Uh, we have not done this, uh, I think. I'm not sure how the other Scandinavian countries have done this. But when, when this is recorded, keep in mind these, if you're watching this three days later, you're like, well, what about the Danes? They closed the airports. Yes. Like we, when we were recording this on Friday, they didn't, they, they didn't close it yet. And it, it was a very, very surprise move, actually. Mm -hmm. And a lot of <clears throat> experts say it, it, it sounds like panic. So also they have been skyrocketing in, you know, in infected people last days. This is true. Uh, Do keep in mind, information is constantly changing, not only day by day, but hour by hour. Yeah. So the information that we're, you're, we're giving you right now is the most up-to-date information that we have right now. But do follow our website for more up-to-date information. Uh, and borders, like I said, will still be open uh, for now, of course, this could change. Uh, part of the reason is because that we only have one international airport. I'm not sure how we would do anything without it. Yeah. Uh, and also tourists have not been uh, a problem. There have been tourists that have had uh, the COVID-19, uh, but we have uh, actually a hotel for them to quarantine. But they are like within, they are like not more than four or five, I think. And not everyone is a tourist. Some of them just, they're, like, they're people in just different situations. Yes. Uh, and then to what I, I'm very interested in, uh, decode genetics. Mm. You wrote about this. We even got an angry email about this. Yes. Perhaps we should try to explain this a little bit. Uh, right. Andy, perhaps um, you know this better than I do. Well, the thing is, is that um, it's still a very small sample size. Um, there are a thousand people who they... They've screened, and they're screening roughly a thousand people a day, yeah. as I understand yeah. it. And then those samples are tested. And amongst the samples that have been tested so far, um, it comes out to like roughly 0.899% um, incidence of the novel coronavirus in the general population. But the CEO of Deco Genetics, Kauri Stefansson, made a really good point about this in saying that this percentage will probably turn out to be even lower because he suspects, and it's my feeling as well, that the people who are going to decode now are people who think that they might have the virus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. So as we get to like the larger group, and it's something like, what, 17,000 mm -hmm. people yeah, who have registered? As we get into the greater population of people who don't think they have it, but they just want to be sure, we may see this percentage lower. We mm -hmm. may see it raised. But for mm -hmm. now, it's it's looking like the operations that we instituted, um, you know, such as the quarantine, isolation, mm -hmm. the information campaign, which, you know, I don't I think can be overemphasized. Yeah. It is incredibly important, mm -hmm. um, has actually yielded some really positive results for this country. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's perhaps more uh, uh, like alarming in some ways is that 40% of them, those that had the coronavirus, according to, to decode genetics, were without symptoms. So this could be, yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what this means. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if they are transmitting at the same time or, or, or just not. They could be carriers. It's yeah. Like a, as a general rule, like the longer it takes for a virus to begin to show effects, the more dangerous yeah. it can be. Exactly. So it's, it's uh, at least uh, like, it's, it's really interesting this work because uh, what Decode is doing uh, also with uh, with the civil guard in Iceland, they are mapping completely almost like mm. this this virus. This will be and this will happen like now in like two or three weeks. They will do thousand per day for mm. seventeen days. It's like seventeen thousand people, and that's like a, a amazing statistic if, mm. if you think about it. Like so, so we will get a very clear picture. Also, it's interesting that they, they found like two strains of the uh, of the virus. Yes. There's this L, L virus, which is the European, and it's a little bit dangerous, more dangerous than the S strain, S virus. Mm. 
Uh, and the Ash virus was in the they found uh, I think a few of them that were infected came from uh, the United States and uh, the less uh, dangerous one were more common in, in the ones that came from America mm. which is perhaps a sign of hope for the Americans I guess yes uh, so uh, 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 yeah uh, this is interesting uh, the like the head of the civil guard in Iceland called Vidir Reynison uh, he said in an interview this morning that he, they were preparing to do this, what we're doing right now, like with all, like battling this virus until July. He says this will not be over until in July. It gave, gave us kind of like, I don't know, because timing, time is a little bit difficult here, especially for me. I'm always trying yes. to read something into the data, where are we now and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. And you, you have very good data in, in many places on the internet. Uh, and you, I mean, we feel like sometimes that we are like more into it than we really are. Right. But this indicates that we are perhaps not. This is not. We're not even in the half of it. So perhaps, or maybe he was kind of estimating conservatively. Yeah. Just to get people to expect, you know. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's June. We're done. Yay. Yeah. Like the virus doesn't work that way. It's it's not on, set on a timer. No. Or something. So keep in mind, this could take months. Uh, I, I've heard, uh, both read in, in the media in Iceland, like uh, in editorials and other newspapers and stuff like this, they're always talking about weeks, but uh, yeah, be, be, be prepared to do this for months. Uh, another thing, uh, yeah, a uh, few questions. We didn't have many. We encourage you to uh, send us questions. We can, we can, we, we call people, we can, I can, uh, we can get answers from them very easily just as a journalist. So if you really want an answer about for a question, we can check them all out uh, and call the right people. Uh, but what uh, uh, we had one question here just on Facebook. I saw uh, one man asked, uh, like, should he, should he still travel to Iceland? From where is he from? From USA. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean... I think uh, first of all, listen to your own country, like what your own mm. what your own leaders are saying. I know mm. it's like uh, I don't want to get political here, but not everybody, of course, trusts the leader in the United States. But uh, they they have very skilled uh, spe- you know, specialists, I guess. Yes. Uh, and if if they say do not uh, travel, of course, uh, listen to it. But it's not dangerous to come here. It's like if you're at at least right now, if you're from America, the United States, you are not going to get quarantined. Uh, it's uh, the the virus is not that spread here. Uh, the screening is very aggressive. Yeah. Uh, and they are they are at least feel like top on things. It's a very transparent situation here. Uh, the the police and the the directory of health and the the, the politicians uh, they they are very transparent in, in with all information. Mm-hmm. So we know exactly what is happening, and that's at least what the feeling that we get. Of course, you never know. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, the the short answer would, would be uh, uh, yes. The question, I mean, why not? Uh, you're probably safer here than in uh, in the US. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, one question: uh, Are banks open? This is a good one. Yes. Uh, everything is technically open. Yes. Uh, but if you go going to go to the hardware store or to the to grocery stores, they will count in. Like uh, if there are more than 100 in the store at the same time, you will have to wait. Uh, also, uh, with the banks, they have, at least in Iceland, we have, a, like, nobody really has to go to the banks anymore in Iceland. No. Uh, unless just to get a house loan or what, something like that. Yeah. It's all online. They have apps, like fantastic solutions online. So uh, the, I don't even see the reason why you should have a th- need to go to the bank unless it was like for a... To deposit a tremendous amount of cash. Or... Yeah, yeah, it would be very specific uh, like mm. reasons that you would need to do it. And I think that would be safe enough. So I agree. So yeah, sure. They are, uh, they are open. Uh, perhaps go over what's open and like most things are open most things are open but yes. like gyms are closed swimming pools and that's basically because of like practical reasons like when you go to the shower in, in the in the in the in the in the swimming pools you have to have two meters between p- people but the, the showers are not like that so they would no. have to 
perhaps three or four could <laughs> bathe at the same time or something. I don't know. Yeah, especially in a gym, <laughs> people sweating all over the furniture and yeah. stuff. Like, yeah, it's but uh, some not a good place to be. Some private gyms are open with mm-hmm. like hectic cautions, but like uh, if you want to go to like see a handball game in Iceland, that, that that's not going to happen. That is the same as no. most of the countries. So, so that's that's basically the situation. The restaurants are also open. The restaurants yeah. are open. Yeah. The, 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 also, there are nobody there. <laughs> Within the recommended seating capacity. Yeah. <laughs> and they do have certain guidelines. Like, um, a lot of restaurants are offering sanitizer. Mm-hmm. Um, they wash menus. Yeah. In between yeah. tables and stuff like this. And I went to the. I went skiing actually yesterday, not in Italy, but here in Iceland. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the thing is, we we, we stopped at like a, uh, at like a gas station on the way, and we asked the people like, how is it with sanitation here? And it was just young, like 20 years kids. And they, they told us that they have to like sanitize everything in every four hours. So they were basically, I saw like two of them with like, with this here, like here, mm. and the, what do you call it? And, uh, to scrub. Yeah. Uh, and they ba- was basically just always scrubbing everything. Uh, so it's like, uh, Icelanders are taking this very seriously and, no, and nobody wants to be the, the business that has like, is not thinking about the safety when it comes to this. Yeah. It's not good for business, obviously. Like I waited until Sunday to do my food shopping because I had a feeling <laughs> that on Friday and Saturday there was going to be a lot of panic buying, and there was. Yeah, yeah. And the grocery store I went to, they had at their entrance both hand sanitizer and disposable gloves. Yeah. And, of course, I used the gloves and then mm-hmm. threw them out on my way out of the store. Mm-hmm. So a lot of supermarkets are, are taking these measures, too. Yeah, and also like there's enough uh, food, water, everything in Iceland. There, uh, toilet paper. Uh, the only, the only kind, kind of uh, risk that we could take if everybody would go and hoard, because if we would do it, that would create more danger than not to. Yeah. So if you just if you just slowly go to the store and just buy like usual, everything will last here for months. Yes, exactly. If not more. Think of your community. Think yeah. of the other people in your community, not just yourself and your immediate family, but there's enough resources for all of us if no one is hoarding vast quantities of particular things. Exactly. So everything is here, and I mean, I mean we, we have spaghetti for like uh, two months and a lot of water yeah. and, and, and ketchup. And we watched the march yesterday, which is uh, with, you know, oh, yeah. with Matt Damon, which yes. is like a very isolated man surviving. <laughs> Start growing your own potatoes. Yeah, exactly. So we, yeah, I think we we're prepared mentally and and physically. Yes. Also, like uh, good, uh, uh, perhaps yeah, like about health. Mm. Uh, the best things I like they were talking about it like uh, at the meeting yesterday, yesterday, with the civil guard, guard and, and health director, about like uh, get enough sleep. Like if you sleep four hours or less, you are more like. Your immune system is is more fragile. Yes. If you if you sleep six to eight hours, you like it gets better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, exercise. However you exercise, just do it. You you only have to do it twenty minutes three three times per week. It will you know it really help your immune system. So there's stuff like this that can you can do to maximize uh, mm-hmm. your, your health basically. Eat healthy. Eat healthy and stop smoking and stop drinking and don't drink. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, also, yeah, here is one. Uh, one question: If I'm visiting Iceland and want to get tested because I think I have the virus, uh, that's a good question. Hmm. Because uh, uh, I mean, what to do? Uh, first of all, I think that people should basically just call seventeen seventeen which is the phone number for the Red Cross hotline. That's 1717. Yeah, <laughs> of course. And uh, the thing is, the Red Cross is, always, is working very closely to, uh, with, uh, uh, with, uh, you know, with, uh, with the government. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that means that they, are, uh, they know exactly where to send you or what advice to give you and, mm-hmm. and so on and so on. So if you think you have the virus, we have uh, we have a plan for that, <laughs> uh, and you will be tested. And uh, if there is a reason to test you, of course, um, I'm not sure. I haven't gotten any answers from the ge- decode genetics. If like people that do not live here can go to decode and get tested, yeah. But it doesn't really matter because the first uh, available time that you can get is like after three or four weeks. So 
Right. It's like, let's talk just then. <laughs> right. So if you're not showing any immediate symptoms, you're probably okay. But if you're starting to feel like you have some symptoms, by all means, call that number, 1717, from an Icelandic phone number, and they don't, will point you in the right direction. Don't go to the hospital. No. That's, that's very simple. Uh, I've I listened to a lot of, uh, like podcast and, and reading the media in the US and nobody states this very in a very uh, well, I was like I would listen to the daily and they were like asking like if I'm with symptoms and I'm go- taking the cab to the to the health clinic should I tell the, the cab driver that I have the COVID virus I would like and the the, the, the responder said like yes of course you should it's like don't just don't, don't take caps, don't move if you think you have it. Well, just, bear in mind that the United States is a very uh, special healthcare system. That is true, of course, it's very different. But I'm just saying that, like, uh, keep in mind, if you, if you think you can transmit it, it's so, it transmits so easily mm-hmm. that you have basically just have to lock yourself in and just do the phone call. Make a phone call first, ask them what to do. And they can even come to you and, and whatever. Do not, you know, go to the hospital. You will, you will transmit it to others. Hmm. Uh, uh, finally, uh, there is a homepage with the civil guard uh, and the health director. It's absolutely brilliant. It's hmm. called COVID.is. Uh, you have all the information in English. You just go to the. I know this will look like Chinese, the Icelandic for someone. Hmm. So go to the to the right corner. You will see the flags. Just go to the English flag. Uh, and you will find uh, everything there in English, and they are like the answers, uh, like uh, basically all questions that you can imagine. Yeah. If they don't, then just send send uh, send them an email, and they will answer it. It's very comprehensive, and it's written in very accessible language mm-hmm. as well. And it's direct. There's even a special section just for tourists. Yeah. On it. So, uh, anything to add to this? No, I think that covers the basis for now. Okay. We will, of course, do this again tomorrow, uh, given that we won't have the coronavirus. Uh, but I'm not worried. Are you worried? No, I'm like, not. Uh, we're on the right dates. I uh, mean, what what, a, what other option is there? Despair? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to be positive. You have to be optimistic. You're not going to. Yeah. While well, at the same time, taking sensible precautions. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you're watching this on uh, on YouTube. Um, if you and, and share it, or if you're on uh, Facebook or like it, or uh, if you listen to podcast, then just give us uh, I don't know like this. What do you call it? Like the finger? The, yeah, the thumbs up. The thumbs yeah. up. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, and if you have questions, just comment uh, both on YouTube or Facebook. Or you can send us email and uh, stuff like this. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.